The Chiefs of Ontario is a advocacy network for 133 First Nations in Ontario. We work with all of the chiefs across Ontario to advocate for uh, funding, better services and programs, but also to advocate for uh, First Nation jurisdiction to create better lived realities for First Nations children, youth and families. Our Ontario Special Needs Assessment um, Manual came about through a long process with the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal decision, and we have a number of uh, mandates under that decision, uh, one being the reform of the 1965 agreement and long-term reform of the First Nation Child and Family Services Program. It also mandated that we participate in reducing the discrimination in the FNCFS program by creating a funding approach that prioritizes First Nation community needs and is more of a needs-based funding formula as opposed to the incentivization formula that ISC was previously using. So through Chiefs of Ontario working to reach those mandates, we then decided to produce the Ontario Special Study as a part of the work. From there, our Ontario Special Study really mandated the goal to prevent and reduce the amount of children in care of a child welfare agency. And in this overall transformation process, there are four stages. The first stage is engagement and preparation for programs, services, and supports. The second stage includes the transitional phase, which is preparing for service delivery to actually implementing programs and implementing services and having supports available. Stage three is the transition to measuring community and agency readiness. The last stage for stage four is a sort of steady state stage, uh, which includes First Nations agreeing on funding. Through our Ontario Special Study Needs Assessment Manual, uh, we plan to achieve transformative change through um, all the communities in Ontario and uh, really any other communities across Canada if they want to use our tool uh, for them to use the tool and determine what is their actual need for uh, child and family services funding. Uh, and then from there, we can have First Nation um, determined and set funding goals to ensure that they can have substantively equitable services available on the reserve and that they can deliver them themselves. The Ontario Needs Assessment Study has five steps. The first step is preparing for the assessment. The second step is gathering the information. The third step is analyzing the data. The fourth step is prioritizing projects and actions. And the fifth step is to prepare the final summary report. And each step is very important for a community to determine their level of need, but is also a really great opportunity for communities to connect with uh, their people and their citizens and their individuals who live on reserve and really think through uh, think through and create a vision together to ensure that they are meeting all their needs in a substantively equitable way. The first step in the Ontario Needs Assessment is to prepare for the assessment. And to prepare for the assessment, you essentially need to engage your First Nation community you need to find out if people are prepared, uh, what kind of services they envision, uh, do they understand the reason for having a needs assessment. As well, you need to think through if you want to have a kind of steering committee or a kind of advisory group or an advisory committee, and from there create a terms of reference. Uh, we do have a few different kinds of tools uh, available in the as needs assessment as well, which includes a sample terms of reference that you can use which goes with your first step. The second step is to gather the information. So from there, you can think through if you need a planning or a research coordinator, and if you need any other kind of consulting people to help you gather the information. So that would be your tool number two in the assessment. And then your tool number three in the assessment is a community assessment chart. And that chart can help you analyze and assess what kind of people are doing what and how much need is where and what needs are also unmet in your community and being able to create data and numbers and reporting around what is needed and what has been unmet in your community for quite some time and then uh, gather all that information into the tool number three. 
Step three in our needs assessment is to analyze the data. We have uh, tool number five and tool number six, uh, which is a data analysis tool and a costing analysis tool. And these tools will help you to determine need, determine unmet need, and really help your community create a vision. So your costing analysis will actually include eight different uh, sheets of information. You can use the table chart that is in the manual itself, or you can use the attached uh, Excel tool to figure out your costing analysis. Our fourth step is to prioritize your projects and actions. So once you've gone through the task of completing your costing analysis, you'll from there be able to determine uh, what is the most urgent need in your community and what sort of requires the most planning and the most uh, resources for your community to uh, determine uh, how you want to plan for the short term and the medium term. In your development of your own community-based First Nation Child and Family Services program. And there you'll be able to prioritize your projects, what is the thing you can get done the quickest, and then from there moving on to larger, longer-term projects and how you want to sort of make that out. It's essentially kind of getting your work planning in order. The last step in the Ontario Community Needs Assessment is to prepare the Community Needs Assessment Summary Report. Tool number nine is an example of what the community needs assessment report looks like, and you'll be able to use that. And from there, you have completed your community assessment chart, your data and your costing analysis, uh, your strategic planning guideline, and you'll have included them all into one report that you can then use to determine your community needs and advocate to increase your funding. The benefits of a community needs assessment is identifying child, youth, and family well-being priorities and needs through a community needs assessment that is systematic, comprehensive, and unbiased in the way that they can document the whole community's needs. The main goals are to ensure that communities reach substantive equality, deliver their own First Nation priorities and needs, and ensure that we prevent and reduce the number of First Nations children in child welfare agency care. First Nations should be excited about undertaking the Ontario Community Needs Assessment to begin expressing their jurisdiction and autonomy, and should be excited and hopeful about preventing and reducing the amount of First Nation children in care.